The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. And uh, we're going to have as our guest today... Uh, Shane Smolian, who is the uh, co-author of the book that uh, we did, uh, it was basically uh, the research work uh, that we discovered uh, through Shane's uh, ability to handle astrology uh, better than anybody I've seen in quite a while. We did a lot of statistical testing uh, using Alfie Lavoie's uh, software, Air Software. And uh, Shane happens to be a uh, not only being adept at you know market uh, technical market analysis, he's very good with the cycles. He has a background in physics, so we're going to have him on uh, at the half hour, and uh, we'll spend as much time as we can with him. I've got a few charts that he wants to show you about where we are in the market now, and he certainly had this uh, you know pretty much pegged, you know the way we uh, have been thinking you know, uh, where we are. So as soon as we get uh, get him connected, we'll we'll have him on and let, we'll go through, through some of the things that uh, he's been working on. These are things that are in the book that we did together. Uh, frankly, that book uh, was uh, would have been a very, very far-reaching uh, without his help because he certainly is adept at computers. Uh, we were able to work with Alfie really well, and we had some things um, that we were able to prove uh, empirically that they work. Part of the things, of course, are the lunar things that we look at, you know, and that's uh, you know what we're what we're watching. The first chart that I posted into uh, Tiger TV today, folks. This is a big day. Uh, you you might not realize this, but we had a ten thousand dollar move in Treasury bonds today, folks. Uh, we went up eight and then down four and up two, so we've had a huge swing in these treasury bonds. And if you look at the long-term weekly chart going back to the high that we made way back in the summer of 2012, we have now made a 786 retracement to that high. We hit it exactly, and we backed off uh, $4,000 in a matter of minutes or if not seconds. Uh, but if you'll notice, the last time we hit a major number, uh, which was several uh, months ago when we hit the 61% retracement at the 141 and change level, you know, we backed off uh, a good seven points from that. But we've covered all of that range today. Uh, we went from 141 to 148, that's seven, and then back down four, that's 11. So it's $11,000 swing uh, in Treasury bonds. And that's a, that's a very big market. Now, if we go to the next, this is real money, folks. This isn't funny money like we have with the S&P, you know, and stuff like that. Basically, you know, it's the same thing. Now, if we go back and do the same thing with the Treasury notes, you'll see that the Treasury notes, which is the largest of, of the markets, that's six times bigger than the bonds, uh, went exactly to the 61% retracement of the high from 2012 during the summer. To the exact tick. I mean, we're talking about 131.13. Just when they went below two percent, uh, yeah, when they went right below two percent, that's uh, that's what happened. So this is a really a, an important day uh, for the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes because if we get above those levels, folks, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, panic city. You have to really respect these numbers because if you look at the bond chart on the weekly basis, and if you look at the note chart on the weekly basis, we hit these things spot on today. And if you go back and look at historically how they do it, they they hit these numbers very, very accurately. And so this is a really important day. And the fact that we're having these wild swings uh, in the market is not to be, uh, you know, not to be taken for granted. You know, we had the uh, just a few weeks ago, back on September 3rd, we had the, the VIX index down around uh, 11 and change, uh, fighting for its life. And today it hit 27, up two and a half times where it was. And that's just the beginning. We're going to see the VIX index sometime, someplace above 60 before we're done with this move, and maybe even higher because the old high was 87, and we could easily, you know, go back and, uh, you know, go back and do that. So... Keep in mind that we are in times of extreme volatility now. We've been waiting for this. 
and it's going to be uh, very exciting to see. Now, remember that the market itself, the stock market, topped on September the 3rd. Uh, that was the New York Stock Exchange Index. That was the same date that we had in uh, 1929. It topped on September the 3rd. And then the market had the crash in October uh, at October 29th, 1929, but the bottom wasn't until two weeks later. The bottom came in around the 10th of November in 1929. And when, when Shane comes on, he'll give you some, some statistics of why we think, uh, well, he thinks, and I have to agree with him 100%, that we're probably going to be coming into some type of scenario like this into uh, November the uh, the thirteenth is the date that uh, he has been talking about, and it's a big it's a big astro date as we all know. So we'll have him on um, probably at the break, and you'll be able to call in. He has a um, a website that he uh, uses, uh, Wolf Trader, and we'll we'll give you that information too, and you'll you'll be able to see that, and we'll post a couple of the charts, and maybe if you want to, you can call in and ask him some questions. He's a very personable young fellow. And uh, certainly knows the material uh, incredibly well. So these are things that we want to, uh, you know, keep in mind, and uh, you know, see what we're see what we're doing here. Okay. Now the next thing is, where is the stock market going from here? We've had this big break. We've broken down uh, beyond, uh, you know, support that anybody thought we were going to have at any particular time here. Uh, you remember we had the solar eclipse uh, just a week or so ago. Uh, on the uh, 8th, and in 87, the market went down into the, or excuse me, the lunar eclipse. It went down into the solar eclipse, and we got the solar eclipse coming down into the um, level of the, uh, hold on one second here, I see something that I need to get here, is to, um, it, it came down into the uh, solar eclipse in 1987, and I think that's what we're probably going to be doing now. Uh, we have gapped down today in the New York Stock Exchange Index, which in itself is a very, very hard thing to do. Uh, we didn't stop at the 61% retracement uh, up around uh, 10,200. We've just continued to drop. You know, we dropped another 5% uh, below that, and we did leave a gap which is, uh, you know, rather rather troubling. The other thing is is that we are trading exactly at the 786 off of the February low, and we're not even close to that, you know, in the S&P and, uh, and some of the others. So uh, this is the start of it, folks. This is something that this shouldn't be surprised anybody. Uh, this is the beginning. This is not the end. We're going to see days where the Dow is going to be down, you know, 700 or more because the old record was 777. And we will take that out. And then the highest day we had uh, on a per point basis was 888. That was before the 777. <laughs> so we're going to get some, you know, real volatility in here. So keep in mind that that's what, uh, you know, that's what we're looking at here when we're watching these uh, these numbers that we're looking at. But this, uh, we're over a really, really critical astrological times uh, through here between that solar eclipse. Uh, that we had on the um, the 6th, and then also the 6th of October, and then the one we have again 14 days later, or it's, well, actually it's the 22nd, I believe. The solar eclipse was on the 8th, and then we have the, um, uh, yeah, solar no, so yeah, solar eclipse was on the 8th, and then we have the other one on the 23rd. So that'll be uh, next Thursday. So we'll uh, we'll see how these uh, how these transpire. But they've they sent up pretty much not pretty pretty much like what we've had going on with the other um, the other dates from 1987. Uh, we've got Shane on the line now. Uh, Shane, are you there? I'm there, Larry. How are you? Hey, I am good. Welcome to TFNN. I'm going to have you on a guest and hope we'll have you on uh, quite a few times uh, you know, uh, in the future, that's for sure. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I have uh, I've copied, uh, you know, the part of the um, – thing that you sent us about what's happening now uh just a second if i can just copy and paste i'm not the oh dear this is going to be tough let's see if we can do this oh boy just don't ever give an italian a steady job it's just not worth it uh hold on a second i might be able to do it this way i should be able to copy it oh, it's not doing it oh boy well i'll tell you what i'm going to have to do i'm going to have to do it backwards here what i'm going to do first is to put up the uh, the chart of the uh, Bradley uh, model. Let me get this up here. Your transit chart, where you have the transits and Bradleys yes. together. Yes. 
Okay, we're going to put that up there. Now, one of, before we get started with this, uh, it's, it's gone into the room now. It shows uh, the dates of where we are uh, right now and also, okay. you know, what you're looking at on the 13th. But what is your, what is your, it's wolftrader.net, isn't it? Correct, wolftrader.net. And yeah, wolf uh, yeah the, if people can reach me at shane at wolftrader.net. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, folks. Yep. So if you get a chance, uh, I'm sure you'll send that uh, report to them. Uh, am I correct? Absolutely, absolutely. I, you, you should be it's, because it's you should be proud of it. Not to, not to give out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. Yeah, it's really good stuff. But go, why don't you go ahead and explain to us what you're looking at here with the transits, and then I'll try to get this other one posted into the uh, room that we could take a look at it. Okay. Uh, first of all, let, let me talk about what's going on with the markets in terms of the transits. Markets are influenced by the transits that are going on above in the planets. And when we combine all these transits together, we get these oscillators. One of them is the Bradley, and another one is the combined transits that I use. And the market tends to move very closely to these transits when there's no federal stimulus involved in the markets. The last time we saw the, the Fed stop the QE uh, was in the summer of 2011, and I was able to, to see the transits, and we were able to pinpoint the bottom of that decline to the exact day. I mean, the transits bottom exactly on August 9, 2011, and uh, it, it showed the peaks, too, before that decline. And so what happened is when the Fed came in with all of the stimulus, the market, uh, you know, had an excess liquidity in it, and it, you know, the, the, the astrological stuff kind of, it didn't work as well as it had in the past. But right now we have a period where the Fed is, is tapering. So we have this period right now where there's no quantitative easing and there's tapering, and the markets are moving very, very closely to the transits again. And if you look on this chart on the Bradley, you'll see that it topped in July, and that's when the New York Stock Exchange topped in the European markets. They actually peaked exactly with the Bradley. Uh, the S&P kept going up for a couple more months uh, because we did still have some stimulus. The stimulus was tapering. But one common theme that we always see with the tapering or end of stimulus is the markets always roll over two to three months after the stimulus ends. So we're in that period now where there's no stimulus. So that meets one of the criteria that I was talking about. I have four criteria here that I, that I say match the crash profile. The first one is you can't have any quantitative easing. If you have the Fed involved in there, if you have the, the bonds being purchased and you have the liquidity, the market has a very hard time going down. At least it has since 2009, so we, you know, we got to take that into consideration. We don't have that right now. The second thing that you need to see for a crash scenario is you need to see persistent selling. And that's happened into almost all the crashes. You get persistent selling for days and days and days before, and then finally the market reaches a breaking point. And we're starting to see that now on the one-day time frame. We're seeing lower lows persistently happening. And so that's the second criteria. Um, the third criteria is that you have to have the Bradley or the transits need to be declining. And that's what's so, happening Shane, now. That's what happens. Yeah. Shane, we've got to uh, pay some bills here. You've got to stay with sure. us, though, okay? It'll be just a sure, couple sure. minute break, and we'll be back with you. Absolutely. Thank you. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back guys, with uh, with my co-author, Shane Smolians. Shane, are you still with us? Okay, you, still... uh, you want me to go ahead and continue with what we were yes, doing? Yes, what, what I was able to do uh, after yeah. a great deal of help <laughs> was to put in the four things that you needed you know, for okay. a crash scenario to, to occur. So those folks are able to uh, to see those, you know, the Fed easing, uh, and the fact that persistent selling, which we've certainly seen. Uh, we were right at the uh, declined and combined transits before we came on the break. Do you want to pick up yeah. from that level? Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so just to review what he just said, we, we, we don't want any Fed stimulus. In fact, every time the Fed has stopped the stimulus, without exception, the market has rolled over. We have not once seen the market be able to go up on its own without stimulus since 2009. That has not happened. Okay, so there's no Fed stimulus now. Number two, the persistent selling. We want to see lower lows, just persistent lower lows. And then the decline in the, the transits in the Bradley, we have that occurring now. The, the transits are still a little bit green this week. In, in other words, we haven't even really started to see the, the big headwinds yet uh, for the market. And those go down through on November 13th. But I think we may have already started yesterday. I put this in the newsletter yesterday that we may have actually started that, the bigger selling. The fourth thing is, is a really curious fact that I started looking at, I started looking for market uh, crashes. I started looking back to the major crashes, going back from... Oh dear, we lost connection. Hmm. Shane, are you there? Oh dear, we've lost connection. I hope, uh, 
I wonder if I'm still connected to TFNN. Holy cow. Uh, maybe we am. I don't know. Well, I'll just keep talking. I don't know if I think anybody can hear me or not. So we've lost. Con uh, no, it's not a conspiracy. It's the telephone company. <laughs> They'll reconnect with him and have him come back on because he, he's in uh, he's in Miami. So I think Miami has electricity, don't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they do. Uh, we'll see if we can get him back on. When they do, they'll let us know. But uh, be sure to, uh, if you get a chance, go to, uh, you know, give him a, uh, check, check him out at www.wolftrader, and uh, we will be able to get all the uh, information from him. I think we've got him back. Are you there, Shane? Yes, I'm here, Larry. Okay, great. Okay, what we were doing now is you were getting ready to talk about, I believe, Mercury, correct? Yes. Now, Mercury is just really interesting, and we're going to talk about this in the book. When we started checking the traditional meanings of the planets, all of them verified with the market without exception. In other words, positive planets make the market go up. Negative planets go down, positive transits up, negative transits down. But Mercury, this particular planet is very important because it rules communications, electronics, and also motion. So a lot of times when the market starts selling, okay, there's a, lack, like there's a confusion in the market. So when Mercury makes that station in the sky, it's a period of confusion and a stationary uh, place of thought, okay? Thought becomes stationary. So I started going back, and I noticed that all the major crashes, without exception, have Mercury making a retrograde within about a week. Like that's statistically, we can go back and look at that. Now, the furthest one out, if you go back to 1929, Mercury made a station on uh, October the 17th, and that one was pretty far out. That was about 12 days. But as Larry pointed out, the selling had persisted and kept going forward. In 1987, uh, the Mercury station happened on October the 16th, and it kept, the crash was on the 19th, of course, and it kept going lower. Um, if we go into the 2008 meltdown, the financial meltdown, uh, one of the worst weeks was October the 6th, and we had a Mercury station on October the 15th. If we go to the flash crash, this one's really interesting. The flash crash that kind of came out of nowhere, um, and what was that blamed on? A communications failure, electronics failure, the fat finger. That's what happens when Mercury's making a station. Mercury made the station on... Uh, May the 10th, and crash was May the 6th, going to 2011, the summer crash we had. Uh, this was the first time I had looked at the astrology software and the transits. It pointed to a massive decline. I, I put this out about a month before. Nobody was expecting it. And the Mercury station came on uh, August the 2nd. That's when the big selling started. The bottom actually happened on August the 9th. And the transits actually pinpointed that. You can see that in this newsletter. It actually pinpointed that bottom on August the 9th. So... After that period, there was a lot of stimulus going involved in the markets, going in and out, and uh, basically uh, the, you know, the markets have been this big bull market, but this is the first time now that we're seeing the stimulus come off in a long time since 2011, so I think we are now at least the setup is here for us to have, a, 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 it's in the profile, and that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but everything's there for it to happen. It certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Now, we've had a question from one of our listeners. Oh, good. Can you stay with us just a few more minutes after the break? Sure. Oh, great. We'll have a little break here. The Dow's down quite a bit. Uh, it's trying to hold up here, and we'll have Shane back right after the break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a question for you, Shane. What is your, uh, do you have a price objective for this November 13th event that uh, seems to be uh, looming out there? What do, you, what do you think will be the price well, objective? Okay, so if we're looking, let me, let me give the S&P, because that's an index, it's a broad-based index, everybody follows that. I, tr I personally trade a NASDAQ, but I'm going to give you the S&P, because that's a reference point. I think there's three levels we need to be watching. I think um, somewhere between 1730 to 1740, uh, that's the first level. The next level would be 1620 to 1630, and the next level would be probably 1550 to 1560. Uh, that and would that, be a pretty severe decline to happen by November. So, you know, but those are, I would give those as some, some you know, down downside targets before we reach a, a bottom on this. That, that's, that's what I'm looking at. So roughly around 20% from where we are right now. So, something around there, correct. Okay, well, listen, I want to thank you very much for coming on, and we're certainly going to have you on again if you're willing to come on because uh, the response has been good, and that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. Can, let me, can you, do I have time for one more thing here? Absolutely, please. You take okay. as long as you like. <laughs> no, I just, have, I just had a few things. So I just wanted to talk, talk about, okay, so all the conditions are met right now. So where are we right now? So right now, uh, the, the retrograde occurs on the station. It's going to go direct. It occurs on the 25th of October. That's coming up pretty soon. That's, that's not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. So that puts that window anywhere between uh, October the 20th through October the 30th. Now, markets, like I said,
This crash doesn't, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be the epicenter, but that's, if I had to pick a time or a date that I think would be, uh, you know, where the selling could start picking up, I would say probably into next week, uh, you know, through the week after. Now, the transits keep going down until November the 13th, and the Bradley bottoms around Thanksgiving. Normally, I would say that's going to be the bottom. But the thing is that we know we have the Fed now, and the Fed's going to come in and probably do something at a certain level. So I can't say for sure that that will be the bottom, November 13th. Before I could, when, there was, when we knew the Fed wasn't going to be involved, I could probably tell you within a week or two, more or less, when that's going to bottom. But now it's very likely that if a large-scale event comes in, the Fed will come in, make a speech, start the quantitative easing again, purchase the bonds, loan the bonds and the auctions, and we could see a bottom sooner than that. But the, the, the price objectives that I gave, uh, are, I think, are very realistic to see. And uh, it's just, th this is just a time to be very cautious in the market. So that's basically the message that I want to send, send to everybody and all the listeners, that if you have any long interest, just be extra careful now. Cash is a good place to be. Or if you're an active trader, shorting is a good thing to do, too. Okay, hold on one second. We have a caller from um, Dan. Are you there? I am. Thank you. Do you have a, a question for Shane? Well, yeah. Um, I guess it's more about a, a intermediate term retracement versus, okay. um, you know, basically if you guys expect any, you know, straight down into November or what type of retracement might get over the interim uh, until then. Okay, I think that's. Well, Larry, you want to go first? No, you go first, pal. You're doing really okay. good. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I think that's going to be entirely dependent upon the Fed, the Federal Reserve. Uh, and, you know, this market cannot rally without the Fed. It has not ever shown the ability to do so. Even if you look at the 2011 uh, crash, that market, you know, they started the LTRO in, in, in the fall in Europe. But in the background – they were really purchasing those bonds when the market bottomed on August the 9th in that whole period, and it would have gone lower. So that, to answer that question, it's really going to depend upon whether another round of stimulus comes in. If there is no stimulus, I think we could see a rather persistent decline with, with minimal bounces. Uh, but if, if we see some Fed action sooner, then we could get you know, some deeper retracements to 618 level, 786. You know, that's entirely possible. But from what I'm seeing now, this should have been a bounce this week, and it's not. So to me, that's a pretty bearish sign. I'm a little bit concerned about this because I would have expected, if there was a retracement, I would have expected it this week, and we didn't get it. Yeah, because, Larry, on uh, IWM, it looks like it's um, a Gartley that that's, should be wrapping up. If, if, I'm, if I'm from mid-May, uh, is that would be the X point. Could you, yes, could you take correct. a look at that, please? I will, and I'll post it into the room. And, Shane, I think I need to let you go because you have sure. things to do. But we'll have no you problem. on very soon if that's okay. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for having me on. You bet, buddy. Thanks again. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. Stay with me here one second, Dan, and I'll put that IWN, IWM in, which is the Russell, because that has been the weakest. You know, we've mentioned that several times. And even when the market was making new highs, the Russell – you know, was falling far behind, and we'll just get that up here in just one second. I hope you folks enjoyed this uh, young fellow that was just on with me because he is in a class by himself. He really does a good job. Uh, he knows the markets. Plus, he, wow, you're, at, you're, you're spot on there, my friend. We're right at the 786 right now, aren't we? Holy cow. Hold on just a second. This could be very interesting, especially when you look at the bonds and notes where they are today. That's, uh, that's the real key. I just want to refresh this. One second, Dan, to make sure that I have everything in, because the Russell's really not down very much today, and it is spot on a uh, 786 uh, Gartley. It sure is. It's uh, the, the number came in at 103.5, and we're trading at 104.77. So this has got a. This could be a really uh, interesting spot. We're making the the retracement off that August low of last year. So I think you've got this one right on. You've got the big A, B, C, D. You've got the two 1.27 expansions. You have the 1.618 expansion, and you have the 786 uh, expansion or contraction. So that's pretty much, uh, you know, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah, because I, I went long yesterday uh, on the IWM, mm -hmm. and I'm surprised it's not taking more heat today. 
I, I can understand that. I remember uh, when I first was working with Tom O'Brien back in August of 87, uh, no, no, excuse me, August of 2007, on August the 15th, uh, the, Dow, the Dow was down 340 points that day, and the Russell was actually uh, up on the day, if you could believe that. And uh, that was a very, very important bottom that lasted for well over six weeks until the October high, and then everything, you know, came unglued. So this is an important chart here, uh, in my opinion. I wasn't paying any attention to it earlier this morning because so many other things were going. I was focusing on the bonds and notes, but this is uh, very, very important where we are right now. Uh, two questions, and I guess the first uh, like a 382 retracement might get us up to like uh, what 110. 110, yes, it certainly could. We're, we're we're very oversold now, and it doesn't take much for the market to uh, you know turn around from here. But you know you you got to have someone stand in front of it, and no one wants to do it right now. Uh, the key here uh, is the bonds and notes hitting those two big numbers. I mean, one hit the exact 618 in the notes. Uh, the bonds hit the 786. I mean, then they, they've had $10,000 swings in bonds, $11,000 swings in bonds in one day. I mean, that's unheard of. I and mean, we haven't seen that for probably five, three, well, let's see, one, two, three, five years. So this is, this is a really key day uh, uh, today, in my opinion. But whether it is or not <laughs> remains to be seen. Uh, if I may, one one other question because I, 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 I this morning I was quite a bit frustrated. I, I, I got um, <laughs> out of my positions. Well, so I was short up until last Thursday. Sure. And that snapback rally was actually in like an engulfing candle from the previous previous low on the IWM. So I got out of my position, my short positions, and went just into cash. And then I'm just frustrated I missed uh, as much of this down move. So the, the bigger the question I have for you is what type of strategy would you put in place for longer term? Because I'm reacting to the past three years. Every every dip has been a bounce. Yeah, well, it's different so where this time, I, my friend. Yeah, where can I put my stops or what, what type of stop strategy would you have where I don't forego the profits I should have and still should I just do a break even or... or well, you have to make that choice. The problem with this is that you have to decide, you know, what you're willing to give up in order to catch the big move down. I mean, look at the other day in the S&P. It rallied 60 points. And what did it do? And in a matter of a few hours, it was making new lows. And so this is what you have to, to go through uh, when you're doing this. For instance, crude oil today had a $3 uh, a barrel rally and then went right back down again. You know, so these are things that are really difficult to... Uh, to define, I wish I could give you a, a clear-cut answer. I really can't. It has to be with what you're willing to risk. That's the whole key. And uh, once you figure that out, then I think you know you got a better chance at it, Dave. But I, you're the only person that can answer that question, my friend. I certainly can't. Yeah, All I do uh, know is if we close below 103 in the in the Russell, this this pattern is probably going to go a whole lot lower because my target on the Dow is 13,000 on this move, and that's 3,000 points from where we are right now. Okay. Very good, Larry. I just want to tell you how much I do uh, appreciate your shows. I got to tell you, you uh, you're a born commentator. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, and I'll send that twenty dollars to you <laughs> just as soon as I accumulate it. Okay. I'll settle for the IWM chart. I'll, I'll, I'll email All you. All right, my friend. Thanks, Thanks for calling Larry. in, Dan. We got a caller from uh, Florida. Dave, are you there? Yes, sir, Larry. Great show today. How are you? Good. What can I help you with, my friend? Um, I, this may seem like an insane thing to, to want to do here. Not in these markets. Not charts. in these markets. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. It's uh, it's a wow, man. What a roller coaster ride this has been. Um, if you look at the, uh, I'm looking at the cash. S&P, the SPX, and from pulling off of the, the February, I've been looking at the, uh, the February 5th as a uh, benchmark, as your X point, and then it, it looks like there's potentially, although we're kind of breaking through the 618 a little bit here in the last few minutes, um, but there's, you know, the A point would be the, uh, of a potential bull garlic, A point September 19th, B point being the uh, Doji candle on uh, October the 2nd, and then potentially being the D one today, and and I realized from looking at the long, wide ranging candle, that that normally that doesn't really signal the the end of the move. You want to see smaller bodies on the candle. I realized, but considering that the uh, the market's you know kind of really oversold, we might 
Oh, we might be due for uh, a bit of a rally. I was wondering if you see that as a, a, a rather dangerous bull gnarly uh, as well. The, the danger is the key word, my friend. I mean, we have gap down in this index that you're just talking about. Uh, you know, we didn't hold a 61% retrace retracement off of the uh, you know the April lows, which was very important. Uh, we're just we're just uh, we have tremendous amount of selling coming in, and with the gap down today. Uh, and the big move down, then I would have to say that, you know, we are going lower. The only thing that I see as a potential uh, that this market could rally is the fact that we hit the exact Fibonacci number in the notes on the weekly chart to the exact tick, and we hit the exact 786 retracement on the Treasury bonds to the exact tick, and those are huge markets. They're much bigger than the stock market, so those numbers are real, they're really important to look at. So... Uh, that's what I would be uh, focusing on here for you know this flight to quality because if we go above these numbers today or tomorrow in the notes and bonds, you know this the flight to quality could go on for quite some time. One other thing, Dave, that someone mentioned to me quite a while ago that I think is relatively important, and that is that the um, the the best way for the Federal Reserve to extricate themselves from all these bond positions and and uh, mortgage-backed securities that they bought is to get the price of these things way up in the air. And what better way to do this than a market crash? And that's exactly what's happened. We've had eleven thousand dollar move in bonds today. I know. That's equivalent. Of. That's equivalent to a year's trading. Yeah, you yeah, know, no and doubt. that's uh, no you know that's that's amazing, and it stopped exactly at the seven eight six. This really means something. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I was watching it, uh, watching this morning, and uh, I got to tell you, Larry, I had to uh, I had to do a double take. You know, you like you're yeah. flipping through it because I happened to be on a couple future screens, and I was looking at some you know soybeans and corn, just you know checking that out. And then I flipped over to the bond screen, and I almost had to do a double take. It was like one of those, am I really seeing what I'm seeing, you know? Um, it, was, it was a rather substantial move. Um, should, be, should be interesting, though, because, you know, just in the time we've been talking, Larry, because the selling is so intense, just in the time we've been selling, it broke the, uh, the 618 on the, uh, going back to the S&P for a minute, supported the uh, 1843. Uh, we may get a chance, because if you look at the ABCD down, you've got a 1.618 expansion of that C to D leg versus the A to B coming in at a little bit at the 707. So we'll, uh, we'll see what, uh, what happens here. But at some point, um, it's, you know, it's got to bounce a little bit at some point. doesn't mean we'll set up another leg, you know, another mm -hmm. set up the leg down for the next move. But I'm just thinking at some point we might have, because we've had such a substantial move, might have a decent tradable Mm -hmm. uh, rally to uh, to try and you know pick a spot and and uh, stick your toe in the water and go long. The, the problem, but, uh, well, we I'd, I'd be really careful going long here until after Thanksgiving. That would be my guess. I I'm, I'm really biased here because uh, you know I've been waiting for this to occur for quite a while, and uh, at least it's starting to uh, you know unfold. So I think we're going to go down a great deal. The thing is that we will get some fantastic volatility in here, which we're already starting to see. I mean, $11,000 move in bonds in one day, I mean, how big a red flag do you have to have? You know what I'm saying? And the, and the currencies are starting, you know, the dollar uh, is starting to move. We're making a 1.27 expansion now. Uh, you know, in the euro, we've come over 300 pips off the bottom in the euro. So all these things are starting to unfold. Dave, you want to stay with us for just a minute till after the sure. break? We've got the Dow down 320. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Yeah, I believe we have uh, our friend from Atlanta. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I am. Mr. Priceline, you know we're going to have a big party at your house. I've invited everybody at TFNN and all of our listeners. I've given you your phone number. So you'll be expecting a call from a lot of people very shortly to have this party that you're going to throw for us. I have a little bit of bad news. I'm not alone in Atlanta. I'm there today. I'll be there till Thursday. Oh, so I you're have, moving out of town. So once we have a party planned, is that it? I have a <laughs> special beach party planned. I what have can my I, truck. What can I do for you, my friend? By the way, the truck is in San Diego and being processed by the uh, agent to switch it into Mexico. I was calling about... First of all, SPY, I mean, I've heard some people say maybe going long, but O'Neill made a very simple statement, and it says if the SPY is headed down, don't fight it. This is the trend. We've been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. September it leveled. October it took off to the downside. I mean, that's a clear signal. So going long is trying to commit suicide. And if you want to send the money to your agent or to your broker, good luck. <laughs> Send it to O'Brien. You would appreciate it more. <laughs> Absolutely. And he, and he would invest in more of his money in this wonderful station. It's amazing what he's doing with this because here we are able to have conversation, discussion, which is very good for everybody. 
Um, I did mention last Friday that I thought 250 was the number, and we discussed it, and we went through it like a drunken sailor. I'm not kidding. This is a stop. It's well, a stop. I'm not either. You know, like we said, it doesn't necessarily have to stop there, you know. Yeah, and it's it down. It's down 30 percent from its reacting high that we had in August. So, 30 percent in one month is quite a bit. It's a lot, and I think we went down. Actually, there's a trend line. If you you draw a line from the September the fifth bottom and the September 15th bottom, there's a trend line. It went to 1010 on Monday, and instead of hitting 1010, it hit 1017. Didn't quite hit the trend line. But it tells you the momentum going down is dramatic. The bounce yesterday was 1050. The bounce today is 1052. So the old support has now become resistance, classic case. And I think if you would agree, we're hoping to get a better opportunity to short highest. But this market does not take prisoners. And as a brand, I think I said in the past, um, those rats are jumping ship. And those that are stuck are going to drown. So I'm I think lose you're a pretty close. A good, that's a good analogy, Charlie. Yeah. You just and have to be patient, I think, and wait to see. You know, whenever you have moves of 350 points in the Dow, now we've had, we're, we're accustomed to seeing triple digit moves in the Dow almost every day now. We haven't seen the big moves yet. Those will be in the neighborhood of 700 or 1,100 points in the Dow. And then, you know, we'll see some, you know, further moves. And this is not the end of the world, folks. This is just uh, a market that's been very, very overbought that's uh, correcting itself. You know, what we talked about just a few weeks ago back in September is when we had that divergence where the NYSE did not make new highs, but we did make highs in the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ by marginal amounts, and yet the NYSE, which is the big index, couldn't even move. And that was telling you the distribution was complete, and now we're heading down. The question is, what are we going to get? Now, we haven't had three months down in the stock market, I think, since Moses was born, and that was quite a few thousand years ago. So to see three months down would be nothing. So you'd be looking at October, November, and maybe into early December before we get a really good tradable bounce, is my guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I will congratulate you. You were the canary in the coal mine. You yeah, the first, first, time in, first time in six and a half years. That's not bad. <laughs> you can say it's early. Right. We've we, <laughs> we got to close it up here, buddy. Thanks for calling yes, in. Right. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. In an attitude of gratitude, folks, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.